Let's talk about a gasifier which turns waste fuels, like grass cake, reeds, straw, corn stalks, fallen leaves and similar agricultural waste with low bulk weight and loose layer, into gas. Let me show you a gasifier for loose layer waste burnables developed and deeply researched 30 years ago. Now we will analyze it in detail with all the technical characteristics, let me briefly explain you why I paid attention to it, and how the creator of this gasifier came to the idea of constructing it. Digging into hundreds of scientific articles and researching the market in third world countries for rice husk microgasifiers, I learned that the incredible amount of sugar industry waste accumulates in those countries. It consists of crushed stalks or their cake. Reading about rice hulls, I noticed that there's even more waste from sugarcane, called the gas, than rice husks. For example, Brazil ranks first in sugar cane cultivation and accumulates hundreds of millions of tons of sugar cane waste, the gas, per year alone. But while making a video about corn stalks gasification, I remembered about the bagasse gasifiers, because our countries accumulate an incredible amount of straw and dry corn and sunflower stalks that are likely to be the only fuel, as wood chips had been already in short supply even before the war in Ukraine broke out. Those who did not contract it with chips before the cold weather could not get them and their price went up. For example, in Germany, the price of wood chips went up from 5 to 25 euros because of the current war in Ukraine. The German government has prohibited to raise the wood chips price above 25 euros for three months, until October 2022, and then they will see. In Ukraine, wood chips price jumped two and a half times since the war unleashed, and this is just the beginning. Trees don't grow as fast as they are burned, and there's definitely not enough of them for everyone. Peat bogs and biosludge from urban sedimentary basins can be a source of fuel, but hundreds of millions of dollars worth equipment, like dryers, mixers, and roll presses, should be built or constructed for this purpose. And nationwide, Billions of dollars should be spent to install such facilities in every city. It is unlikely that such investments will be made in the nearest future. We should always start with the easiest way. In our case, with straw and corn stalks. So, I decided to make a review of this kind of gasifier and offer my services as a professional designer to those who will need it. I have already shown the Chinese version of the gasifier working on a similar fuel. You can find this video titled Turning Corn Stalks into Gas on my channel. Now I will tell you how the designer of the gasifier on loose layer burnables understood that it is necessary to build this very kind of gasifier. One day in 1981, while in Maharashtra, a scientist woke up because of the smoke and gigantic fires lighting up the sky, but gas was burning. When sugarcane is processed, huge amount of wastes was dumped into the mountains and just burnt due to the lack of space. It was a colossal waste of energy and air pollution. By the way, we also burn straw all the time, or it just rots in the fields. In India, the amount of bagasse burnt was so huge that it made a brown haze over the continent. Hundreds of millions of tons a year, you bet. The bagasse consisted of stems and leaves 0.3 to 0.5 meters long. In Indian villages, water was pumped by diesel-powered pumps to irrigate the fields at that time. Five horsepower diesel-powered water pumps. These were the most common irrigation pumps. The scientist wanted to turn this fuel into energy and analyzed all technologies from steam to sterling engines. Gasifier effective efficiency turned out to be the best, so the scientist decided to make such a gasifier. The more so, as diesel engines were already in place, he only had to make them dual fuel. The scientist's team made a test gasifier for an engine and went further creating a half megawatt gasifier powered station. It is noteworthy that experiments lasted for 10 years and not a single scientist from more advanced R&D centers believed that the project would succeed. They just didn't believe a humble team could make it. But the team managed to create the station. This gas generator worked on various loose fuels, leaves, sugar cane cake and other low-density biomass, i.e. corn stalks or wheat straw, that is, loose, low-density burnables. 
It was a breakthrough gasifier, no one had ever made such a thing. It had been tried and tested for many years up and down the line. I even managed to find the only video of it. At the time when it was being made and tested, not everyone even had a camera, not mentioning YouTube. After 10 years of work on small and medium-sized gasifiers, the team built a plant with 500 kilowatts thermal power and immediately tested it during 700 hours of operation. It proved to be good in continuous operation and able to operate around the clock for 7,500 hours a year. The most amazing thing is that it was a back-run gasifier. I already have a video on my channel about turning straw into gas, where I noticed that only the USSR managed to make a back-run straw gasifier. And I published my own experiments with a copy of the Soviet gasifier. All that was designed for similar fuels in China and the US was direct flow gasifiers exhausting 30 to 150 times more tars than back-run gasifiers or fluidized bed giants. But here, we are talking about the back-run process. The feeding system consisted of a scraper conveyor seen in the video with a small control unit which regulated the amount of gas and the rate of fuel feed into the hopper. Also, an automatic ash shoveling system was made. The burners had flame control systems. The team experimented with different leaves and stems, leaves of sugar cane, sorghum, bagasse stems, bagasse, virus stalks, and sugar cane pulp. Table 1 shows the relevant findings. There you can see the fuel bulk weight, size, and moisture content. Leaves were crushed on a 2.3 kilowatts crusher. The bagasse from sugar refineries was already fine and did not require crushing. Unfortunately, it was wet, so up to 50% moisture had to be extracted. Table 2 shows the chemical composition of the fuels. Table 3 shows the test findings. Interestingly enough, the gasifier could run on cane leaves only as well as on bagasse or on any mixture thereof. The moisture content of the fuel should not exceed 20%, preferably 15%. After 700 hours of testing, the gasifier was taken to the ceramics firing plant to work at a real factory. There it was connected to the 5 by 3 by 3.5 meters firing kiln. The kiln had a shortcoming, loading a fresh batch for firing dropped its temperature while it was necessary to keep it constant. So, opening the doors required more generator gas to be supplied, sharply increasing the volume of gas for the burner. Both the burner and the system coped with this well. I.e., it showed itself well in the abrupt load change mode. Graph 4 shows the relevant data. The biomass consumption per dry weight ranged from 55 to 72 kilograms in ragged load mode. Table 4 shows the relevant data. The gasifier did not work at full power because the furnace did not need more gas. Tables 5 and 6 show the economic indicators. I have been working in the field of industrial gasifiers for almost 10 years and have conducted a lot of negotiations and estimated many projects on heat trade. I know the wood chips market very well. Chips were in short supply even 5 years ago. A newly built wood chips power plant drew off all the possible chips from several regions leaving some people in shortage. If we talk about mass introduction of gasifiers, and all goes to this fact, in the near future, they can only be fueled with straw, stems and leaves, i.e., waste agricultural burnables existing in very high amounts. Therefore, the future belongs to these very gasifiers. Who needs to develop a design of such a gasifier, my WhatsApp is under the video. See you.